Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's March 14th, 2019, and today I'm in the den, and this is another episode of growing sweet potatoes in a cold, temperate climate and starting those sweet potatoes indoors. If you missed our first video, uh, I'll post a, uh, it'll be uh, denoted by clicking on the link in the upper right hand corner, and I highly recommend watching that video first so that uh, so that you have a basic understanding of how I'm approaching this whole thing and the, the experiences before. I'll also post another link to a video I, I posted about 10 months ago where I was showing transferring of the sweet potato slips after we get them emerged from the sweet potatoes and putting them, growing them out and getting roots on them in a perlite mixture in the work area. It's been two weeks, so February 27th is when I took some organic sweet potatoes. I put them in some bowls, I soaked them for an hour or two, and then I went ahead and put them in these uh, seed starting trays. Now these are, there's just one big cell in there, so it's a perforated tray inside of a non-perforated tray inside of a support tray. And I go through that whole thing in the first video. And it's, it has a soilless mixture in there, so it's perlite and uh, peat moss predominantly. And I filled that up and packed it down pretty darn well, moistened that soil down. Then I transferred those soaked uh, sweet potatoes, put them into the soil, left well, one third of them out of the soil so that I could examine those sweet potatoes every day. So what's happened over the two weeks? Oh, and I also set them on a heat mat on our seed starting tray without this light on. Uh, so I just turned the light on just now, and uh, so they don't need any light source when there's nothing coming up out of the sweet potatoes. So if the, sweet, sweet, if the slips have not emerged, we don't need the lights on. And really, they don't even need the lights on at this point. I'll probably give it a, uh, give it a day or so more or if I hook up a time-lapse camera, I'll leave the light on so we can actually see what's going on. So, two things that I would say that I've been paying close attention to. So, as, so we do have some emergence of some of the slips here. So we have some slips coming up out of some of the sweet potatoes. No leaves have emerged yet, but we see the, the primary shoot coming up. And no doubt there's some roots going down as well in this circumstance. A couple of things I check is one, I pick up the corner of this of the perforated tray, the most inner tray, and I make sure that there's moisture on condensation on the inner surface of this tray. And and I make sure there's no water inside of the tray. I don't want I don't want there to be water sitting inside of this tray. I don't want it wicking up very much into the soil until we really get some leafing out and all, and then they're gonna require some, there's gonna be transpiration, meaning that they're gonna be uh, losing, evaporating uh, uh, moisture from the leaves themselves once the leaves have emerged. So at that point, I will, but for now, I want it just damp. I want the, the soil just moist. So I feel it, and if it's getting real crusty, if a large area goes down at a time, I water it. So it's every couple of days. The other thing I do is I feel each one of these sweet potatoes and make sure I don't feel any soft spots. If I find a soft spot, then I know that there's some decomposition. There's saprophytic uh, fungi or bacteria breaking that down. And there's a chance that there's a chance that diseases can get transmitted to the slips uh, as a result of that. So if we're finding soft spots, I pull that sweet potato out right away and I feel right around the margin. So I do that every few days when I'm checking the soil, checking the, the moisture content in there. And I have to do that throughout the whole process as I'm growing the slips. And so I probably will lose a couple of sweet potatoes uh, at least that's been my experience when I've done it in water in the past. I've had some decomposition, they get soft, and once they get to that point, you can actually see the microorganisms trying to work the way all over the root structures as the slips start sending down roots in the water as well. And you get all that slimy uh, gunk, if you will, in the water and in the systems. So that's what I'm trying to avoid by adopting this system. So we have two trays of the sweet potatoes here. I have another tray that I started some ginger 
almost a week ago and I'll probably, I may very well do a series on how the ginger goes in turmeric. As soon as I get some organic turmeric, that'll, that'll, uh, I'll, yeah. I'll start those as well. They're being started quite similar to the way that we're doing these sweet potatoes. In the same environment, in the same techniques, on a heat mat, without any lights, and, and all. Now, uh, that video that I mentioned about the starting the microgreens that I put, uh, that's up in the upper right hand corner, well, in that video, I did a time-lapse videography uh, series. So I took a photograph every 60 seconds, merged those together. So you can see day one, day two, day three, up to day eight when I harvested the broccoli microgreens. And these are some microgreens, the next set that are started right here, right now. Excuse me. And I'm going to try and do the same thing so we can actually see how the sweet potatoes, how the sweet potatoes emerge and how they look throughout the hoe process. Uh, and especially if I can find any spots that look like they're, they're, they're not normal. I may separate that out and we'd be able to see those spots. Because sometimes when you closely examine the, the sweet potato slips, you can see areas that's, that get discolored and those areas that get discolored end up turning white at, at some point in time and they actually have a disease process, a fungal disease that's actually uh, starting into the, the, um, into the slip itself and we don't want to transfer those into our, into our gardens as well. Now all of this soilless mixture is all reused. I, I, I will go ahead and, and recompost it, re recycle it each year. Sometimes it goes into worm beds, sometimes it goes into the chicken coop, and sometimes it just goes into containers where I let all of the uh, remaining residual root structures of the microgreens break down, stir it up, let it dry out, become desiccated. Then I go ahead and mix it all back up again, moisturize it, see how it is. Do we get any growth on it? If we don't get any growth in it, then I go ahead and I use it again. So as many uses out of our soilless mixture as we can, ultimately that soilless mixture ends up turning into soil because the microorganisms, the beneficial microorganisms, end up moving into those systems because they have some of the food structures there as well. So that's about as much information as I have at this point. We've had two weeks of, of time since we've placed the sweet potatoes in the soilless mixture and we've got some evidence of the sweet potato slips starting to emerge now. Over the next two weeks we should see a whole bunch of those sweet potato slips starting to emerge and, and certainly it'll keep going week after week but we should see some of these growing out. And then I'll make a decision whether I want to keep some of these sweet potato slips in here, let them grow out in longer lengths, and then slice those up and see how well they do as far as uh, propagating sweet potatoes in the future as well. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, if you thought this video was of value, please give us a thumbs up. The likes help us build our channel and grow our channel. I wanna reach as many people and, and interact with as many people as possible so I can learn and you can learn along with me. So thanks so much for watching folks and have a super fantastic day. Bye bye now.